Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2014 movie, The Rover. It's time to recall, let's get started, turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we are taken to Australia. We learn that it is 10 years after a global economic collapse that caused worldwide turmoil, the Australian outback is a lawless wasteland, crime and poverty are common, and small military units patrol the outback attempting to maintain what little law and order is left. We see a man named Eric who is alone in his car. After a while, he gets out of the car and enters a hut where Asian music is playing. The scene then changes and we see three men after a robbery gone wrong. Archie, Caleb, and Henry flee, leaving behind Henry's injured brother Reynolds. Henry wants to go back and save his injured brother, but the others do not agree as they tell him that if they get back there, they will surely be caught. Henry himself is also badly wounded. While driving away, Archie mocks Reynolds and Henry attacks him, causing Caleb to crash the truck in which they were driving. When they cannot maneuver the truck out of debris, they abandon it. They are right in front of the hut where Eric just entered and they spot Eric's car. These three fear that they are being chased, so they get into Eric's car and drive away. Eric sees out of the window and is shocked to realize that his car is being stolen. Eric right away comes out, but by then they are gone. He then notices the truck stuck. Eric manages to free the truck and goes on to chase the thieves. Eric speeds up and manages to catch up with them pretty quickly, but they refuses to do so as he drives side by side. They point their guns at him, but he still does not back down. They then make a stop and Eric goes to the three men. He goes on to strangle Archie, but Henry knocks him unconscious with a shotgun. The scene then changes and we see a soldier taking his last few breaths as he tries to gasp for air. The man is lying in his own blood, and we also see Henry's brother Ray. Ray has also been shot, but he manages to drag his body out of that place. Ray gets into a military truck and drives away. He then manages to drive to a secluded area where he parks the truck and drags himself out of there and tries to tend to his wounds. Eric, on the other hand, wakes up in the middle of the fields, and the other three thieves are gone by now. He still has the truck the thieves left behind. Eric starts driving on and makes a stop at a place called Food. He asks the man about the three men by giving a description of the man in his car, but the man at the shop tells him that they did not stop at his place. Eric then sees a boy in front of a den. The boy pees and enters in the den. Eric goes on to follow the boy and asks him about the three men in his car, but the boy tells him that he does not know anything about it. We see that this den is an opium den. Everyone is high except one or two people. The boy then tells Eric that there is one person who must know about it. They call her Grandma. Eric goes to Grandma, who is in another room. She tells him to come inside and goes on to ask Eric if he is there to have some fun with the boy he was talking to. He, however, tries to ask her about the three men with the description of his car, but she does not give him any information. He then walks into another room where we see two Asians and also a dwarf playing cards. The man goes on to tell them that he wants to buy a gun. The dwarf asks Eric to follow him, and he follows the dwarf to his trailer. The dwarf throws a rock at his chained, defenseless dog. Inside the trailer, the dwarf offers Eric a gun for $300. Eric doesn't have $300, so he abruptly shoots the dwarf in the head and leaves with a gun. Eric now has a gun. He again goes into the den where he saw Grandma. He is positive that this woman knows something. This time, he points a gun at her head while he asks her about the thieves. Grandma is, however, cool and does not seem to be scared of the gun pointed at her head. She again tells Eric to give her his name, but Eric refuses to tell his name. She then says that if he does not give up his name, she is just going to start calling him her baby. Henry asks her again, and she tells him that the three men did come from one direction, but they changed direction after making a stop. He asks him why does he love his car so much, but Eric points the gun at her again. She again tells him to stop being so rude, and he leaves the den. After another confrontation with the opium den's owner, he walks back to his truck and finds Reynolds, who asks why he is in Henry's car. Eric asks Reynolds where Henry is, but Reynolds faints before he is able to tell him anything. Eric then goes on to make his way to the store called Food again. This time, the owner of the shop points his gun at Eric and tells him to buy something from his shop. Eric is a little weirded out by that, but he does buy something from the shop. He then tells him about Reynolds, who is in a critical condition. Eric goes on to ask the man that he needs to take him to a doctor. The shopkeeper tells him about a doctor, and Eric leaves right away. The night falls, but he keeps driving on and gets to the address given to him. When he gets in front of the house, the doctor is already outside. She has a gun in her hand and tells Eric to put his gun on the table. 
Eric does so and requests her to take a look at Reynold, whose condition has gotten even worse. The doctor performs a surgery on Reynold and asks Eric what he is to this injured man. Reynold, however, does not answer the question and instead goes on to ask the doctor about her own wage for treating the patient. The doctor, however, tells him that she does not care about money since she doesn't really need much of it. Eric then asks her if he can get a little fresh and she allows it. Eric takes a shower and as he does that, he notices a mysterious room. When he opens the door, he sees many dogs caged in that room. The doctor also joins him in the room and she tells Eric that she cannot allow her dogs to be out at night because the people will capture and kill them for food. It has happened before, so she is prudent about this thing now. The doctor then notices that Eric also has a small wound and offers to take a look, but Eric tells her that he is doing just fine. The next day, Reynold is awake and the doctor goes on to take a look at his wounds. When she is doing that, Eric arrives and points his gun at him. He tells him to take him to his brother right away, and Reynold promises that he is going to help him find the three thieves. Eric then feels like someone is approaching this place. He goes to look outside the window and sees two vehicles approaching in the distance, senses threat, and takes the doctor's rifle. The occupants of the vehicles turn out to be the traveling circus members seeking revenge for Eric's murder of the dwarf. They kill the doctor's companion without warning when he comes out to investigate. Eric kills the acrobats before leaving with Reynolds. They keep on driving, and as they do that, Reynolds falls asleep as he is still a little weak from the wounds he has. When he wakes up, Eric again goes on to ask about Reynolds' brother, but Reynolds tells him that he is really hungry. Reynolds and Eric then make a stop at a motel. They decide to rest for the night at the motel, and when they are in the room, Eric asks him again about the three thieves, and Reynolds says that he does not really know where they are. Eric gets pissed. He pins him against the wall and threatens to kill him if he does not comply. Reynolds says that he is going to need him because he does not even know in which town they currently are. Eric, however, says that he is well aware of where they are. He then picks up his gun and leaves to sit outside. Reynolds goes to some other people to talk to them, and after a while, he joins Eric outside. Eric now admits that he does not really know where they are. Reynolds goes on to tell him how the other three had to leave in a hurry when they got in trouble and he was mistakenly left behind. Eric, however, says that they leave him behind because he might be worthless to them. Reynolds, however, does not agree with that, of course. Reynolds says that he believes in God and then he starts talking all spiritual, saying things like the God looks after him and so does his brother Henry and they would not let any harm come to him. Eric, however, is not as positive. He tells Reynold that he is an idiot because his brother is the one who actually left him behind to die. Eric starts talking like that and Reynold leaves. He gets back to the room and tries to sleep, but it eludes him. He then spots a gun and puts his own bullets in the gun. As he does that, he sees a military vehicle approaching. He panics and gets under the bed and this is exactly when there is a knock at the door. He mindlessly starts shooting at the door and when he opens the door to see who it was, it turns out to be a little girl. This is when bullets start coming from the window and he ducks down. Eric, who is still outside, hears the gunshots and sees a man shooting right into their room. Eric quickly approaches the man from behind and kills him. He then takes Reynold and both of them hit the road yet again. When they finally camp again, both sit and talk. Eric tells him that he is going to find those three at any cost and Reynold tells him that his brother has to be someplace as he has to see a man there. He adds that he is going to be there for two weeks. Eric, however, says that he does not trust anything or anyone anymore. Ray, however, tells him that he has heard his brother talking, so he is positive that Henry is going to be there. Eric is then asked if he ever worked in the mines, but he tells Reynold that he worked as a farmer. He then asks Eric about his shooting abilities, but Eric does not answer the question. Eric then asks him why he is talking so much, and Reynold admits that he's trying to stop thinking about the little girl whom he killed in the motel. He then asks Eric how he can stop thinking about it, but Eric tells him that he should not stop thinking about it because this is a price he should be paying for taking an innocent life. They then go to sleep. Reynolds wakes up early and goes away to relieve himself, but when he comes back, he sees that Eric is being taken away by some soldiers. He goes into hiding right away and Eric is taken away to a military base. At the small army base nearby, he learns he is being transported to Sydney. He asks a soldier sitting in front of him that if he knows when he is over, but he does not want to live anymore, and then tells the soldier that he himself knows that it is over for him now. The military man, however, tells Eric to just shut it and wait for his transportation to Sydney. Eric asks him why they are sending him there. They should just shoot him and be done with it. The military man, however, tells him that he is just doing what he has been told to do by his superiors. Eric tells the soldier that after finding his wife with another man, he killed them both. 
He is angry that the authorities seemed to not notice or care. The military man is shocked to hear this. Eric tells him that it hurts because what happened to him was really crappy. As he keeps talking, the soldier thinks that Eric must be high or something. He tells Eric that he should just shut up because he does not seem to know what he is talking about. This is when they hear some sounds. It seems like the military base has been infiltrated. This is when we see Reynold. He goes on to kill the two soldiers outside right away, and by the time the soldier sitting in the room with Eric stands up, Reynold comes inside and kills that soldier as well. He is about to shoot him again to make sure that he is dead, but Eric tells him that he does not need to do that. Eric and Reynold then get out of the room and hit the road yet again. Reynold keeps talking all the way. He then offers to drive, but Eric does not allow him that because he still does not really trust him. Reynold tells him that his gunshot wounds hurt really bad. Eric stops the car and tends to his wounds again, and they drive on. They arrive at the town where Henry and the gang are hiding. They find Eric's car outside a house and break in. Eric holds Archie and Caleb at gunpoint, while Reynolds goes on to confront Henry. Eventually, both hold each other at gunpoint, with Henry not understanding why his brother wants to kill him, and at the same time, Reynolds accusing his brother of letting him die. Reynolds becomes emotionally overloaded and shoots the wall by accident, which causes Henry to instinctively shoot him in the neck. Eric hears the gunshot and kills Archie and Caleb, before walking into Henry's room and finding Reynolds' dead body. He shoots a devastated Henry in the chest and then burns the bodies. Later, Eric pulls to the side of the road in his car. It is revealed that he was obsessed with finding the car because his dog's corpse was in the trunk. Eric prepares to bury the dog in the desert, and with that, the movie comes to an end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.